So good afternoon to everyone. And in these days, and also thanks to the tutorial, we try to show you how to prepare samples and to acquire them at flow cytometry machines. So today I want to give you some introduction on how to analyze data using Flojo. So this is the workspace that you see when you open Flojo is uh, divided in three sections. Let's say the first one, the upper one is tools and action. You can uh, uh, find uh, different tabs and bounds, and we are speaking on that later. The, the middle one is the group section, and the subfolders is where you can organize your groups. And the last one, the third one, the lower one, is where you put your sample and you start to analyze them. So going with tools and action, uh, Flojo has uh, an easy uh, visual navigation of uh, work, uh, workspace functions. As you can see, there is the application, maybe see, the application button here. If you open it, you can save uh, and uh, find uh, open a new workspace uh, or edit the, the, the one that is open now. There is a taskbar with some uh, um, action that you can perform, like uh, insert sample or uh, um, go to the layout uh, editor and table editor that I'm going to speak later on that. And then it's also divided in tabs and bands. Bands is important because group similar um, action together. So you have a way to navigate here in uh, Flojo, how mm, to see your experiment, uh, the biology, like cell cycle, kinetics, or whatever. So this is the upper part of Flojo. So starting to import your data that you acquire at flow cytometry machine. So there are two different possibilities. You can drag and drop directly the, uh, the samples in the sample pane, or click Add Sample button that is located in these two different positions. OK. The, um, the second part, the group pane, uh, is a list of four groups in the workspace, and there is the, uh, the number of, uh, of uh, each group uh, located like size, and you can also uh, give uh, a role to your groups, like, uh, I don't know, te test, compensation, or positive and negative controls. These groups, as I mentioned before, act like folders to organize your sample, and you can also organize subfolders. You can give one color for each group, so how to create group. You click on this icon and um, locate it again into different position. And when you click on this, uh, you open uh, Stuck. No, okay. You can open uh, this window and you can change the sample name. In this case, it was a spleen. Change your color and uh, you can um, give the role of your group. Um, group are uh, called also live group. Here was a live group here because you can uh, uh, include uh, uh, criteria of your samples. For example, these samples were analyzed using this different color, live and dead, CD4, CD3, CD8, and B220. So um, this criteria can include, uh, let's say, the staining panel and also different um, keywords that you can add. OK, so going to the last part of the workspace uh, is sample and sample analysis. Here you can display uh, the sample that you insert, that you add to your uh, work, uh, workspace. And uh, by default, you can see the name, the statistic, and number of cells. But you can add column. How to do that? You need to do right-click with your mouse, edit columns, and you can add column value. There are a lot of different column value you can uh, add tube name, whatever. Here, an example where I add the, uh, the color and markers of the uh, staining of the spleen that we have here today. So, we have inserted our sample, we create groups, and now we want to start our, uh, let's say, getting strategy, analyze our data. So, you need to click, double click on your sample. If you do that, you see that the, the diamond that was gray becomes solid and blue, and this indicates that you are uh, uh, working on that sample. When you open it, you have um, the window that appears, is like that, is divided in uh, different part. In the upper one, you have the gating tools, how to create gates, the plot view options, the graph type, 
and active option. There are um, several type of pl plots that you can do with the Flojo, and they go from pseudo color, contour, density, uh, to histogram. So you can try them and find the one that best represents your data. So I say that in the upper part of this window, there is the, the gating tools. So um, gating tools, uh, you can decide to do rectangle, um, e uh, ellipse, polygon, or auto. Auto is, uh, if you click on this icon, the uh, software by itself uh, recognizes the population, uh, the most dense population. So you can uh, do also undo with this uh, window. So please uh, uh, try and modify uh, your gate. Uh, uh, don't be shy to do that. You can do a lot of time. So explore the gating option oops, and uh, find again the, the best one that uh, represents your data. So um, let's say we open this window and uh, after we identify our population of interest, in this case, CD3 positive uh, B220 negative, you need to double click on that, and then a new window will open it. So here you can change uh, the uh, parameter of interest to identify other population. Okay, sometimes we need to transform our data. Why? Because uh, sometimes the data are uh, a little bit squished. So there is an option that is the transformation one. You must click on this T on the window and click on customize axis. This window will open, open and what you can do during transformation. You can se select the parameters that you want change. So you can decide to change only one or all the parameters that you have in your mix. And this is the number one. You can add or remove the positive range on the, uh, on the top end, so on this part, by clicking on plus or minus. You can select the, the scale, because maybe you want to see your uh, sample in a bioexponential, logarithmic, or linear. Then you can uh, um, increase the, uh, sorry, you can remove number four, the negative range, so you can remove the positive and the negative. And then you can also, um, change the width of the uh, display to, uh, to scale differently your population. At the end, you click apply, and this will apply to all the parameters that you selected before. So these, there are some examples. At the beginning, the population was like that, so squeezed. And then if you move the, uh, the buttons that I showed you before, you can have differences and changes in your plot. So the effects of this transformation is that you change the uh, visual impact of this graph and it is important that you um, center your population with the stat statistical center. So uh, what this transformation do at the end makes the eye resolution uh, and digital cytometry data more, more appealing for the eye. Okay, so we create our gating strategy, we uh, transform our data and now we, need, we can also compensate with this uh, software. As we say in these days, compensation is very important and corrects so overlaps between uh, fluorochrome emission spectra. So compensation is very important when you work with multicolor panels. So if you work with two colors that are very near, like FITS and PE, you need to compensate. I put this slide to try to show you more how who is, what is compensation. And uh, in this case, we have a um, sample stain only with FITS and is a sample not compensated. As you see, maybe here, FITSI and PE have um, overlap between the two spectra. So we want to compensate that. We want to remove the, um, the overlap between two this color, and we want that there is no, the MFI of PE is equal to zero. In this case, there is only FITSI, and here is a case with two different color. So, how to compensate in Flojo? You need to open the matrix. How to do that? You click on this matrix here, and this is the windows that open. At the beginning, if there is no compensation, you can see your sample like that, with zero in all the, um, in the, in the quadrants. Uh, in this case, there are some fluorophore that need to be compensated, like that one. And what we can do here, you can add a new matrix, duplicate the, the, the one that is open now, or delete another one. 
So uh, after compensation, uh, you will before uh, how to change the compensation. You need to insert uh, the number. So uh, how much you want to remove the overlap between the two colors. And if you can see here, this is the same matrix that is represented here. So you can change and add and remove overlap in both way, x and um, y axis. So after compensation, you can see that the color of the matrix is the same of the uh, number matrix. And you can ask to the uh, software to display um, you know, together the uncompensated and compensated one, or see only the compensated one. OK, we did our getting strategy. We analyzed our data. And we want to uh, see this data all together. So we can open Layout Editor. Layout Editor is a tool to create a, a graphical reports. And to open Layout Editor, you need to click on this icon that is located in the upper part of the workspace. And this is the windows that you can see when you open uh, Layout Editor. Uh, layout Editor, uh, similar to the uh, workspace uh, of Flojo, has uh, a control panel with different tabs and different bands. You can uh, add or delete uh, layout, also duplicate them, and then you can text and draw tools on this uh, layout. So uh, basically, a uh, graph can be organized and uh, reformatted here. You can add also statistics, keywords, or whatever you want to add in this uh, uh, layout. So I say that you can organize graph and also reformat it. Here I put my getting strategy of the sprint. It's the same uh, getting strategy that you saw in the uh, video tutorial. So there are uh, um, cells stained also with the CD8 and CD4. And I want to change the plot of, for example, the first plot. Uh, right click on that plot, and this graph definition window will open. So here you can change uh, axis. You can change the type of uh, graph. This, in this case, I put counter plot. You can ask to the software to show our outliners or use large dot. You can also uh, change uh, the uh, fonts and legend. In this case, the, you see that the um, fonts and uh, annotation are very small, so you can ask to the software to increase that. OK, I did this getting strategy for the first sample that I had, so I can create uh, a batch report. Batch report is a um, operation that can perform the same analysis that you see now in all the samples that are represented in your group, only in the group that you are analyzing at that moment. So in this case, I click on this create um, batch report, and this is the output that I have. So I have a layout, the starting one, and my layout batch report. OK, using Layout Editor, we can also see uh, backdating. So we are interested in CD8, and we want to know where CD8 are, CD8 are located in uh, our getting strategy. So we want to see if we took all the cells in our getting strategy. So right click, backdating, and this is what appears. So your CD8 are these red dots that are located in the CD3 cells that are alive and single and in the original gates for the physical parameters. OK, we create our um, strategy. We have our uh, reports. And now we want to perform statistics. So uh, to do that, open table editor. And uh, this is a tool very important to create your statistical reports. Again, table editor is uh, like, uh, oops. Layout is like layout editor with uh, the um, possibility to add, remove, or duplicate your uh, table. So to, to work on this uh, table editor, you need to add column. And this is the window that appears. You can decide what kind of statistic you want to add to your table editor. In this case, I selected count. So I will have the number of the cells uh, that are um, the number of the cells, you need to select the population of interest. But as you can see, you can select a lot of statistic value from median, mean, uh, uh, percentile, and the frequency of the, um, the population of interest uh, compared to the total, to parental, or whatever. Here I put an example. So I did a statistic on the count of the cells, live cells. Um, CD4 cells, CD8 cells, and I also had the uh, statistic mean uh, of CD3. 
cells population, but I want looking at the uh, expression of CD8 parameter. In this case, you need to remember to add the parameter that you before compensated using your matrix. After that, you can create, uh, um, you can also uh, format and uh, visualize different this table editor. For example, you can select to uh, visualize uh, a heat map of uh, some uh, um, parameter of interest. In this case, only the mean of uh, CD8. You can create a batch also here because uh, using this create table, you will create a table of the parameter that you are going to analyze in the sample that are located in your group. In this case was the, the spleen and the unstained one. This is uh, uh, an example that you uh, can use this uh, software, Flojo, to analyze very complex sample with a lot of uh, marker and to um, record and to perform statistics with a lot of parameter. After that, table editor, you can export that as a um, Excel, remember that if you export uh, as uh, Excel, the uh, formatting will be lost. You need to reformat uh, on uh, Excel uh, um, software. So to end this presentation on Flojo, I want to say you, to you that Flocytometry is uh, an application that allows you to generate a lot of data. And uh, it's very important to learn how to analyze them and important to analyze them very carefully. So I would like to thank you, and I'm here for the question.